Right. <clears throat> this morning, as you can see from the screen, we're considering spiritual gifts. Um, now, I think this has been a really interesting talk to sort of pray over and get my head around in the sense of, you know, so often we look at um, you know, receiving receiving things from the Lord and, you know, we come with maybe a, a mentality, it's, you know, I need something, I need something. But spiritual gifts is a complete, yes, it's given to us, spiritual gifts are given to us for, yes, as a very great blessing, but it's all about the church. It really is. And so let's unpack that over the next few minutes and just think that, let, allow God to change your thinking and allow God to speak to your heart as to what, you know, some of you may have had, feel you've got gifts, you may have used them, you may not have used them, you know, you may be at various different points on the journey. But let's just be open to God and allow him to speak to us and where things have got, you know, maybe things have been hidden, allow them to be, you know, opened up again, allow God to use you as he wants to, because at the end of the day, you know, Jesus said he's going to build his church and we want to cooperate that with that, don't we? Because that's, that's the key central thing to what God wants to do in this world, build his church, because it's, you know, the church is the, the best, new, you know, is, is his vehicle to work through in this world and you're part of it. So allow him to, you know, that's where I'm coming from. So hear the heart this morning. It, it's because that, that's, that's really what I want to get across to you. So let me start with the scripture, just reading from 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. This is from the New Living Translation. God has given gifts to each of you from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Manage them well so God's generosity can flow through you. So as God pours in, pour it out. Now, so let's consider what are the gifts. They're God's grace at work in our lives. They're not something we can work up. They're given by the Holy Spirit for the common good. This is not just a bless me, Lord. This is God gives these things by his grace to benefit the wider church and to benefit the wider community. It's not me-centred. It's outward-focused. And it's, these are given to perfect the saints, i.e. all of us, for the work of ministry. So they're given to help us be more effective, to help us as a the body of Christ in this this part of the world to be more effective. So how do we do that? Well, let's think, look at what, what in some of the passages that the main one is in the middle that um, we're focused on is 1 Corinthians 12. You might want to have that open in front of you. But there are three main passages in scripture that talk about um, gifts. As you can see from the slide there, there's one in Ephesians 4 that talks about ministry gifts. So apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. And then what has been the one that we're looking at, 1 Corinthians, what may be termed manifestation gifts, so manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So messages of wisdom, knowledge, faith, gift of faith gift of healing, so prophecy, 
discerning of spirits, and then speaking in tongues and the interpretation of tongues. We'll look at what some of these mean. And then motivational gifts in Romans 12. So God uses people to prophesy, to serve. So, you know, it's not all about being super spiritual. You know, God can use your service in uh, ways that will be, you know, benefit the wider community. Teaching, encouraging, giving, leading and showing mercy. So there's a very broad, wide, wide range of different different gifts here. Um, so let's just have a look at um, from the scripture. What um, I'm just going to read you a couple of short excerpts from those uh, those different passages. <clears throat> So starting with Ephesians 4, this is from verse 11. He gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. So going back to what I said earlier. So these gifts are to equip the body to be more effective for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So these gifts are to help you grow in your faith, grow in your understanding of God, grow in your relationship with God. And then 1 Corinthians 12. Now to each one, so that to each one, that excludes nobody. So you've all got a gift somewhere, whether you've realized it, and we'll come on to that in a minute. So to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one that's given given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to others gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to others miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still in, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of the one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. So they're from the Holy Spirit. They're to help us. Different aspects of what is needed in the church so we'll think about that again, that also in a, in a minute. <clears throat> and then from Romans 12, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. And if it's to encourage, then give encouragement. So... All you encouragers out there, keep encouraging. If you're prophesying, keep prophesying. Be strengthened in your faith. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's to, if it is to, inca- oh, sorry, lost my place. If it's giving, then giving, give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. So mer- showing mercy is a gift. <clears throat> So think about where's your motivation, where's, where's your, you know, your real heart, your real passion for what do you want to see happening, you know, what, what's God speaking to you about, and allow him to um, you know, develop the, the gifts in you that um, you may have had um, people pray over you, prophesy different things, you may have um, felt a calling to a certain you know, type of ministry, you may not as yet. But if you, have, if you haven't started that journey, ask God to direct you. Ask God to help you. Ask him to reveal where does he want you involved? Because it's, as we said earlier, it's all about his church. It's all about seeing his church grow, blessing others, seeing them grow. Because, well, So we can ask God for gifts, 
because it encourages us in um, 1 Corinthians 12 at the end of that chapter to ask, you know, earnest, earn, earnestly, earnestly seek the greater gifts. You know, seek those that are the, um, the most appropriate for the situation, you know, you're in. The ones that will benefit the church. The ones that are, you know, uh, people might see a need, might see, you know, how can I be a blessing in that circumstance? It might be a, appropriate for, you know, you to act in a certain way and be a blessing to that person or to that situation and use your gifts, whether it's showing mercy, whether it's giving, whether it's serving, you know. But as we all work together, God works through God works through that situation. As you're open, as we're open to Him, He can work. When we're not open to Him, it's you know He still works, but maybe works through other people. But you miss out on maybe playing a part in that. So let's just be as open as we possibly can to what God is wanting to do in us and through us. Because that, at the end of the day, will be a blessing to the wider church, will strengthen others, will, you know, whether it's drawing people in through you know, speaking the gospel to them, whether it's prophesying encouragement to someone, whether it's serving somebody. You know, the list is endless, but our, our requirement, our need is to be open to him and responsive to him. Because, and as, as is a part of the, the passage in 1 Corinthians 12, we, we are members of one body, but a body has many parts. And if we're all going around comparing ourselves, saying, I'm, I'd, like, I'd prefer to be an ear in this body, or I'd prefer to be a foot, um, but God calls you to be, you know, a hip bone or a calls you to be a, you know, an elbow or figuratively speaking, obviously, um, it's playing our part, isn't it? And not trying to be, it's not a, com oh, comparison against him or her. It's, I'm playing my part. I'm finding my place. I'm using the gifts God has given me to play an effective part in serving the body not just keeping it to myself. And that is, at the end of the day, is, you know, playing our part means the body functions effectively and does the, the most that it can through God at work in us. It's not a case of, um, you, know, you know, if you thought about it on a sort of football level, shall we say, or a team sports level, if everybody functioned for themselves, you know, you see that sometimes in, in teams, don't you? They fun everybody's functioning for themselves and the team kind of works, but it doesn't really. When everybody knows their role, knows their responsibilities, it's an awesome thing to watch, isn't it? So, what's our response to this? Are we open to God working through us? He's equipped us with his spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to work through you. Those gifts are for the common good. So, blessing someone in your service, you know, rather than, oh, I'm too busy, I'm focused on myself, being open to bless somebody with whatever gift that might be, you know, means the body benefits. And I think this, this last point on this slide is, is quite key. Um, Paul talks in uh, various places in Tim the book of Timothy, uh, particularly addressing um, the area of spiritual gifts, 
Stir up the gift of God that's in you. Fan it into flame. Don't neglect it. So that suggests that, you know, gifts need developing. They need, you know, you need to pray into these things. You need to meditate on, you know, if somebody's prophesied something over you, spoken a word to you, allow that to be something you give some real, real focus to. Allow it to develop in your heart. Allow God to speak to you. Allow him to build you up in your faith, strengthen you, fan it into flame. What does that, what does that suggest to you? Sorry? We've got a part to play. Yes. Sorry? Yeah. So you imagine. Okay. Yeah. So you imagine if you were lighting a fire and you've got that, you know, that match and you're kindling and it, it may have died down slightly. What are you going to do? Fan it into flame. Get, get your sheet of newspaper or your bellows or whatever and you know, allow God to work in that situation. Allow him to be, um, you know, open your life up to what are you saying, Lord? What, what, do you, what do you want me to be doing in this situation? You know, if you've allowed it to go cold, fan it into flame. And also in that passage in Timothy, um, Paul talks about give yourself wholly to this so that your progress will be evident. So that suggests it's a case of, you know, it's not a, oh, I'm casually doing this. Give yourself wholly to it so that, you know, others benefit, others see it. And so just in it, this, the, as I said earlier, real hard here is to encourage you to just think back on, you know, have a, do I feel I've got a, a, an identified gift or gifts? Because it could be one, or, you know, it's certainly one, if not many. And um, so it's how you, you know, fan that into flame, how you use it to greatest effect by being open to God. So, so yes, ask God, you know, be open to the most, ask God for the, the most helpful gifts in the situation that you're in. So in terms of, but it says, earnestly desire the greater gifts. So it's, it's not, again, not a casual thing. It's not a, um, you know, something just to, mm, it'd be nice, but it's pressing on, focus, you know, give yourself wholly to it. And then, as we've talked about, rejoice in, in, your, in the interdependence. So it's, it's not a, I'm using this because um, of, often, or so often, we get into the situation of, you know, oh, so-and-so's got a gift of whatever, and they get put on a bit of a pedestal because we think it's a bit of a sort of super spiritual gift. This is not about egos. It's not about, um, you know, uh, it's not about, you know, individuals. It's about, you know, the gifts being used for the greater good, for the common good. And um, the, we'll hear about it next week, no doubt. The, the Corinthians had the issue of they were, they'd come from, um, shall we say, they'd been converted from pagan worship where, shall we say, the, they may have been wrongly compelled to do different things and they come come to Jesus. They'd received the Holy Spirit, and they obviously had some hang-ups with from their past. And they, um, Paul, had to correct them to say, you know, the Holy Spirit leads you in, into you know good things, leads you into right things. And they, um, chapter fourteen, which is what we focused on next week, talks about 
how they were using sort of the gift of tongues, maybe incorrectly, in the sense of they were having lots of messages in the gift of tongues in a public setting like this, but nobody was interpreting it. So it didn't really benefit people very much. Whereas he said, Paul says to them, I'd rather you speak an in more intelligible words so that people are built up. So, you know, the body is built up. And so it's the key emphasis is use what's benefiting the wider good and use them in love because sandwiched between chapter 12 and chapter 14 is chapter 13, which we all know, which is about love, which talks about, even if I could fathom all the mysteries and can speak you know, in the tongues of angels but have not love, what's the point? It doesn't benefit me anything. So love is always the key. So speaking the truth in love, we may grow up into Christ. So let's just be open. Let's allow God to speak. Allow him to do what he wants to do in us, through us, but to bless the wider body. Because it's, it's not about me, it's about us. So... Was that, that was the last one. Yeah. <clears throat> so I haven't followed these notes. I've sat here with pages and pages of notes, but it's it's a case of yes, as I said, it, it, hear, hear, hear the heart and allow you know allow allow God to speak to you as to what's relevant to you, um, because obviously. The, the, the main gift that's for, for should we say for, for our use is you know if you um, speak in tongues you you know that's a helpful gift to build yourself up for edifying or building yourself up but um, you know, just to settle for that and not to you know look be, look beyond that to allow God to use you and use your gifts, other gifts to, you know, bless the body and press into what God has for you and excel in things that build up the church. So, as I said earlier, God wants his church, wants us to, you know, be cooperating with him. So let's allow him to do that. And let's just, um, I don't, what's the time? Okay, right. Can we just take a couple of minutes and just, let's just pray and let's just ask God. I just, just say three things. Um, ask God to help us to look to the wide body. If you feel you don't know what your gifts are, um, very happy to pray with you afterwards. And you know, you ask, you can ask God, what you know, what do you want me to be doing? What, what, where do you want me to be um, plugged in, so to speak? And then also, if you feel your gift has sort of grown cold or whatever, just be open to God and say, look, Lord, I'm sorry. I've, I just want to open up to you again and allow you to work through me. Because I'll just read that verse I started with. So, Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for the gifts you've given us each to each of us from your great variety of spiritual gifts. Lord, we ask that you would help us to manage them well so that your generosity can flow through us. Lord, thank you for your Holy Spirit at work. We welcome his work. We want to see it increase and ask for more of that in our midst here in Arbury and into the workplaces and different situations you take us to day by day, Lord. Lord, we ask for more of you. Lord, where we're not sure what our gifts are, Lord, pray that you give us insight, you give us understanding. Thank you, Lord, for that you're a good God who gives wonderful gifts, and but Lord, they're for 
the benefit of all. And we just pray, Lord, you'd help us to be those seeing that our times are in, in you and we're plugged into your body, but focused on the head who is Jesus. And Lord Jesus, we just want to give you your church back and just say thank you for your love for us. Thank you for all you've done for us. Lord, we just want to cooperate with you in these days. And where we've allowed a gift to go cold, Lord, we just pray that you would breathe on us afresh and help us to know more of your presence, more of your leading, more of your grace to help us in these days, Lord, that we might show forth more of Jesus in this world. Amen. Amen.